So this is our pantry behind us um, and the pantry is made from a lorry freezer body. It's incredibly insulative and we learned quite soon after designing and growing our food here on the land that we needed to store food for winter months. So we're eating lots of fresh through the summer and the winter would come along and uh, we, we wanted our food that we'd grown. We, we had lots of perishing food and, yeah. and the, the animals would help themselves to it and so uh, the first pantry we actually tried was, was underground and the temperature remained fairly steady at about sort of 10 or 12 celsius and although that might seem cooler obviously in the summer months you know it, it's, it wasn't that cool in a way and also we got a quite a high water table here so going underground is actually quite problematic so like for, for instance potatoes continuously sprout at that temperature and so we're forever taking all the roots off and all they would do would dry out and you know go sort of flexible and not last and so um, I had this we also had lots of solar excess solar energy from our off-grid system you know when we've stopped charging everything and you know there's basically just solar going to waste because we're not connected to the grid meaning that we can't sell it back and so it seemed to me that we're we're missing out on a trick that we could actually run a compressor and actually turn you know create a, a walk-in fridge essentially and so yeah the lorry freezer body was a ebay find which we're able to bring it back and sit it you know build it ourselves we increased its insulation and we to to add to the thermal mass we, we obviously had to add lots of water inside which of course can be the goods, the drinks and the, all the crops that we've stored in there and essentially as soon as there's excess solar energy the compressor would come on and supply cooling and chill down all that liquid mass and then at the end of the day the pantry would switch off and have to coast through the night maybe for a few days uh, depending on how much solar e electricity that we have and it's, it's, it's that that stored the energy, the cooling, as in it's all locked in all of that mass, all that water that's in there. And so it was a real game changer, to be honest, to have the pantry on site and, and, and its proximity to the house. It's like having an on-site shop, as it were. Um, and so we could keep the rodents out, keep the badgers out, and all our food was, was, was last, like, you know, a year's supply of potatoes, you know, would last, you know, 12 months. I mean, it was absolutely incredible. Through the winter period, we were finding that we were running out of solar. And so we decided to cool the pantry down at obviously the coldest time of the day, which is the night time. And so I added roof vents. They basically using a, an automatic window opener, these insulated vents open up at dusk and close at, at dawn. And that then preserves the cold that we've managed to, you know, pass through the structure. And it's, it's to, to allow the, to pull the air through without using fans, we actually looked into the Benelli effect, where just as how you're, you'd open in your house, perhaps a door and a window on opposite sides and hear something slam, it's that through draft that I wanted to harness and, and sort of use as part of the, the cooling. And so by having one of the vents pointing into the prevailing wind, and the other one behind the structure and as the wind passes over the roof and the sides it actually creates a negative pressure behind and it's that that actually pulls the air through and so we could have good cooling without using fans and using just the night night air wind we also have the solar tube put on the, the side but you'll also notice on the side so we're very south facing here and so gab's also put a sunshade on the south 
facing wall. The pantry basically needs to be really near your house. <laughs> And so, and so they had to combine as a social area, you know, and obviously we're trying to get the sun off the structure, which is part of that, that, that whole roof lifting up angle is to actually take the sun off so that air can, you know, it can be cooled down. And the front here, if we're trying to shade the front, then we may as well create other energy for ourselves, which is what the water tubes are. That's actually creating shade onto the structure, but equally creating free solar hot water for us. And obviously the shade is, uh, although it looks attractive, it's all about trying to get the sun off the structure so it doesn't heat up as much. So we've lived off grid for 21 years now and we're not grid tied. It's just solar uh, here. And it's been challenging at times, especially perhaps through the winter when you haven't got abundance of sun like today on this lovely sunny day where you're just charging up everything. Uh, the washing machine's on, the pantry's running, you're charging the car, everything's plugged in and then winter time comes along and I hear on my shoulder Gavin saying turn this off, turn that off, we don't have enough energy to run certain systems here and you really do become aware of how energy works and what items pull a lot of energy so yeah it's been a big transition mm. for me, a big learning curve on energy but we've managed to, to build things here to run and have a lifestyle with quite an abundance of electrical items. Yeah, um, well we've expanded the, the solar system as time's gone on. You know, it's been an accumulative thing. Like in the beginning, we actually were facing a, an expensive grid connection. I think, I think it, 20 years ago, it was two and a half thousand pounds. And so we decided instead of doing that, let's just invest in off grid. And, you know, our first system was pretty low as in it could even run a washing machine. And then, you know, we slowly decided that this was something we could do. Technology's got considerably better and more affordable, I guess, to live this way. Now we have, we got TIG welding machine. You know, we, we can, we run our road car, you know, electrically. We've got a, we can charge the golf buggy, which we use for the, for the garden. We cook electrically for eight months of the year. Pantry runs from yeah, the it. pantry runs from it, the accommodation runs from it. You know, it's, it's not necessarily do we go without, it's just we have to be mindful of what are we trying to use and when. Like mm. There needs to be sufficient solar energy to be able to kind of like weld, you know, so I'm not going to weld in the darkness. I'm going to, you know, do that job when it's, when it's sunny. And in that, that there's, there's value, it seems, when you don't have a constant that you actually, you know, that you can kind of go without occasionally. There's, there seems to be a value. And, uh, and so the, the winter really teaches us the value of electricity. And so through the summertime, there's massive appreciation. And just having that ebb and flow of almost any kind of resource seems to have that effect. And I just, I like that way of living. I think it, it, it steers us in a, in, a, in a good direction. We, you know, there's, there's appreciation in that. There's gratitude in that. And it's, I, I can't seem to do it in another way apart from by having sort of the ebb and flow of things. It certainly taught me, coming from quite a, perhaps a convenience kind of lifestyle, to be very, very mindful of resources. And energy is a big one here. Um, so yeah, being, being careful certain times of the year is very important. Obviously the, the, the lithium technology, the battery technology that we have is uh, not only very, uh, you know, uh, high, high resource dependent, but they're actually really expensive. And so we need to get really smart with designing electricity here. You know, instead of just uh, putting in enormous battery banks, you know, we actually have to be really thoughtful, like the pantry utilizing the excess solar energy is about actually creating sort of practical, you know, design. You're looking at physics you know, looking at the science, how can we actually make this building as efficient as it possibly can? Clever design, it seems, you know, is, is gonna be the way forward. I'm not, I'm not saying that technology won't change and perhaps improve, but ultimately, really, we can, we can match that with permaculture design. And for me, when I discovered permaculture, it was, it was like uncovering the, the Holy Grail. You know, it was, it, was, it was finally that there's something that actually makes sense you know, that's that something I can work with, something that actually sort of challenged the crazy world that, that, that we're in. And so everything changed from then on, you know, it was, it was just, uh, it, it is just a fantastic way of shaping your life in a better direction. And it's, uh, I, just, I just hope it continues to spread.